everybody. My name is Dr. Punya Nachapa. I'm an assistant professor at Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One of the projects I'm studying is the interaction between soybean vein necrosis virus and thrips vector. The virus was recently identified in 2008 in Tennessee. Since then, it's spread to over 16 Midwestern and Southern states, the most recent one being Ohio. Here you can see soybean thrips on our plants. These are teeny tiny insects that are barely 0.5 to 2 millimeters in length. The feeding scars can be noticed at these whitish, greenish, blotchy patches, again, along the veins. Typically, thrips feed on the underside of the leaves, but you can see the damage on the upper side of the leaf as well. These insects reproduce very quickly. It can take around two to four weeks, but it depends upon the temperature. Soybean vein necrosis virus could be potentially transmitted by several species of thrips. In fact, as many as 10 species have been reported in soybean fields. My graduate student, Stacy Keo, has been working on this project to identify potential thrip species. My uh, master's thesis um, is to identify different thrip species um, that transmit soybean vein necrosis virus. And we've been getting samples um, from the suction trap network um, sent to us from the University of Illinois. The traps are set up for soybean aphids, but we, all, we sort through to see what thrip species we can also find. And we've found three major species so far, tobacco thrips, um, soybean thrips, and flower thrips. And when we actually go to the Purdue Ag Centers, we sweep the field and find these live vectors out in the field as well. So Stacy here is conducting a transmission experiment the plant in the cage is infected with soybean vein necrosis virus. On this plant, Stacy had previously placed some first instar larvae or NIMS. Interestingly, in this group of viruses, only the first instar larvae can acquire the virus, which they then transmit throughout um, their developmental stage, even as adults. So she's placed the larvae on these infected plants she then transfers the first instar larvae after a 24-hour period on these infected plants to a healthy or so-called clean plant. We then monitor uh, the appearance of symptoms on the clean plants over a four-week period. And this will enable us to tell if the thrip species actually transmit the virus to a clean plant. Overall, my research efforts are to identify the incidence and disease spread of soybean vein necrosis virus in Indiana, as demonstrated by my graduate student Stacy here, who is loading a gel uh, to do a molecular analysis to screen uh, the tissue samples of soybean plants that we brought from the field. Both these objectives to look for the disease incidence and identify potential vectors are being funded by a grant from the Indiana Soybean Alliance and USDA NEFA AFRI seed grant.